Hi, it's the Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. I'm just gonna do a chatty get ready, let you know kind of what's been going on. Ugh, it's so hot. I don't know how much actual makeup I'm gonna get on because it is hot today. So I hope you're having a great day. Thank you for watching. By the way, I'm doing a giveaway. It's going until the end of the week on Friday, the 25th. If you want to find out how to get entered and what you have to do, because there's a few things, I will leave a, a link to the video that has all the information in the description box below. But it's kind of in celebration for me crossing that 2,000 subscriber mark. So thank you for watching. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being subscribed. And go check out that other video to get entered for the giveaway. I'm gonna start with this. This is the new Lisa Eldridge Elevated Glow. I forgot that she mentions that there are kind of skin tightening, skincare aspects to her Elevated Glow. So I'm just gonna put it on underneath and tap it in here to my cheeks and see if we get a little lifting and tightening. I don't know, we'll see. I do like how it's very glass skin. If you like a really natural but kind of shiny glow you would like this <laughs> i don't know why that didn't come out easy you would like this not you would like this but um you gotta leave it on for three minutes and then you can go on from there so i took some time off i don't know if you noticed or not but i took about a week and a half off my kids had just started summer at the beginning of this month um, my oldest daughter, my 13 year old, is spending the first part of the season while there are still strawberries um, at a local farm picking. And it's so interesting because my kids, although I, they do a lot of chores around the house, I make sure they're really thorough. I was raised with a really good work ethic and I don't want my kids to be those kids who don't know how to do stuff, right? <laughs> and so I've been like, okay, come back. This floor isn't clean. You're gonna clean it for the third or fourth or however many times till you get it right. I am that mom. So um, she was kind of worried that the type of work that it takes to pick fruit in a field is a little bit above what she has been used to. But she's like, you know what, mom? All the things that you taught me about making sure that I'm thorough, about putting my head down and just focusing on the task and not complaining. She goes, all of those things, all the other kids who, who got fired in the first couple weeks because they weren't picking enough or they weren't being thorough or they weren't being careful with the fruit. She goes, they're not there anymore. She goes, I'm so glad that you taught me all of this. And I was like, and on the outside, I'm like, oh, great. And on the inside, I'm like, oh, you do listen. I was so delighted. <laughs> um, but since last summer, I don't know, it just like rolled back in your mental memory, like where we were last summer, what we didn't know was safe or wasn't safe. And now things are different. And so many more people are vaccinated. My oldest has gotten her second dose and she's passed her two weeks past her second dose. So she's fully vaccinated. My 11 year old, sadly, is not yet and won't be probably till later this fall. So we're finally like, let's sign you up for swim team. You wanna to go to volleyball camp? Let's do volleyball camp. You wanna do basketball camp? Let's do basketball camp. And my oldest is like, can I go pick strawberries? I'm like, if you wanna work that hard, I will drive you and pick you up. So my kids are really busy this summer, kind of busier than I anticipated being. And I'm having to get back into that mode of like the parent who drives them to do things, <laughs> picks them up and okay, keeping everybody's schedule in line. You're doing this, you're doing this, you have a music lesson, I need to pick you up. It's getting a little hectic and I kind of miss that last year when we were supposed to just stay home, I didn't have to drive anywhere. So now I'm glad that they're active and they're doing things and they're you know, able to get back kind of into a more normal life. But then there is that part of me that's like, oh, I have to go and drop you off and pick you up and take you here and there. And so now I'm back to taxi mom. That's me again. Has it been three minutes? I don't know. Let's just say it has and keep going. This one actually, um, the texture is kind of similar, but it's a little, just a little bit thicker. And you, I need the smallest amount. I think this would kind of like last forever, like a cream blush, like you need a very little amount. <laughs> Look how, how high coverage this is. This is serious. I'm just gonna use a synthetic brush to see if I can, you know, spread this out a little bit more. I'm gonna be mixing this today. I really like the way this looks on my skin. This is the Misha Perfect to cover BB cream. Um, it's too dark for me, so I'm gonna be mixing it up with a little bit of this blurring skin tint from Fenty in shade number two. I have tried really hard my entire parenting experience to let my kids feel 
the consequences of the choices they make, to not be like that helicopter parent who's constantly circling, hovering, telling you what to do, how to do it, doing your homework for you. You know, I've tried so hard not to be that parent. And I think I had a realization recently that I'm pretty much good at not being that parent until it comes down to one topic. <laughs> <laughs> so both of my girls play a musical instrument. My oldest plays the piano and she has really gotten to the point where she has taken off and she doesn't need to be reminded to practice. I basically have to tell her stop playing the piano and come do the dishes or stop playing the piano and come sit the table or whatever it is that I need her to do. She would much rather be playing her instrument than anything else. She loves it. And I love having that problem as a parent, but my youngest is not at that point yet where she's crossed over from I'm doing this thing and it's a chore to, I love playing music and my youngest plays the violin. I think it's really valuable. My husband plays several musical instruments, guitar, bass. Um, he has played string bass, um, tuba. <laughs> and he, you know, just cause he played a lot of, you know, stringed instruments, he can play the ukulele. He's not terrifically good at it, but he's better than average. Um, I play the piano a little bit. And I play the harp. I used to play harp in orchestra all the time. And so music is really important in our family. My youngest loves to sing. She loves to do things, but the minute she has to buckle down and like learn a piece from Bach, oh, she's struggling so much. And so her violin teacher, long story short, is her violin teacher finally made the suggestion <laughs> that maybe instead of practicing with Lily every day and coming to her lessons, that maybe you should just send her in for her lessons by herself and I'll make sure to write really clear notes <laughs> and maybe don't practice with her every day and let her take on the responsibility and maybe she won't hate it as much and it won't be that moment where you end up crying and your daughter ends up crying and I was like, oh, I have been a helicopter parent. Oh, I have been so much when it comes to music. And then I realized, is there anything else that I'm kind of like that with? I've been trying really hard to evaluate and just kind of be like, I'm not going to be that parent. <laughs> and then I realized I was and I was like, ah. but thankfully now that I am not, it's been like, I don't know, maybe eight weeks now that I haven't gone to one of her lessons. And the only reason I was going in the first place is because she's doing the Suzuki method. And when you first start out with Suzuki method, it's kind of like the requirement that if you're gonna sign your kid up for Suzuki lessons, you have to practice with your kid every day and you have to come to the lessons and you have to learn so that you can help them during the week. And so that's why I was doing it. And now they're kind of like, mm, I don't know that she needs it anymore. And I was like, hmm. And the funny thing is um, my daughter's violin teacher is a friend of mine actually really good friends. She's an amazing teacher. Um, I'm so glad that my kids, both of them, I'm really good, really good friends with both of their teachers. And I love that they have such compassionate, understanding, you know, amazing teachers who really get how to teach and encourage kids. But I think that both of these teachers, because they're friends of mine, and we actually like hang out on the weekends and we do stuff, <laughs> that they haven't had the heart to be like, maybe you should just die or, or, or not be so intense with the kids. But I, I guess for me, having come from a family where music was really important, my brother, piano, guitar, clarinet. Um, I played flute in band when I was in middle school and high school. I don't play it anymore. Um, but, you know, being in orchestra and we used to sing in choirs at school and in college and like we really spent a lot of time in music groups. We have a room in our house, it's called the music room, it's where the harp is, the piano, all of my husband's guitars, um, the tuba, the violin, like all the things. It, it's literally a room full of musical instruments. We've got some hand drums, like, we're those people. Anyway, so I just I had that moment of realization. I've become a helicopter parent, <gasps> much to my horror. And so now I'm trying to make sure to reevaluate the rest of my parenting where I'm I'm not kind of constantly hovering. I need a little bit of setting powder in some strategic places. So I'm gonna use the Dior powder, no powder. Um, especially like <laughs> these forehead lines, I swear in the last 16 months, they've gone from like fine lines to like cavernous. <laughs> so I'll put a little bit of this here. It's the first day of summer. No wonder I need to officially set my nose. Like it is really, really heating up. 
It was nice because the beginning of this month we still had temperatures in the six, mid 60s to low 70s during the day and then within a week it's like 90s and now it's like triple digit so it's it's really warm today or it will be. I have been in love with the Lisa Eldridge Enlivening Blushes. I'm going to kind of create my own shade here. I'm going to do a little bit of Island Glow um, and you really need the smallest amount. This is like maybe the size of a little tiny French lentil. And I'm gonna do a little bit of Venetian red. I don't know if this is a good combo color, but we're gonna find out. So I have the color mixed on the back of my hand here, and I'm just gonna use this synthetic brush. I'm just gonna kind of stamp it in here and then continue to stamp it on the back of my hand until I know I have enough color on the brush, but not so much that when I put it to my cheeks, I end up with a clown cheek situation and just lightly start to kind of pat this in. I don't think I'm going to do any bronzer today, but I do want to use a contour. I'm going to pick up this contour from Salt New York and I'm just going to like plop it on like right here and blend it in. So a little bit there, a little bit here, and then I'll just start tapping it in. I feel like if I put the contour on first and then I put blush over the top, sometimes I lose it. I'm gonna take a little bit more of this Lisa Eldridge on the back of my hand and I might mix it with a little bit of this blush here. I wanted to do this last time I was playing and use it to kind of like just tap over the top here. I love how glowy this is. It just makes me super happy, but I also like that it's not sparkly. It definitely is. I love that she titled it Elevated Glow because it really is. It is not sparkly, it is not glittery, it is not it does have a bit of a metallic shine to it, but it doesn't look like you're trying too hard. In my opinion, I, I really like this and I think it's a beautiful product. And if it kind of tightens and lifts my cheeks a little bit, all the more for that too. Uh, I need some brows, like really quick. Got my brows on. You know what's funny is since I started using um, lash serums on both my eyelashes and my eyebrows, I feel like I need a lot less in my brows and I'm not buying anything expensive and I'm sure the expensive guys work too, but I'm getting like the 25 and $28 serums off of Amazon and they've been working great. I will make sure and list the two down below that I have been using. I'm surprised at how many more hairs I have. I was complained that I had three little hairs from the arch on out. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's a lot more hairs and I'm having to pluck in areas I haven't had to in years. So. I've been finding that they've been working for me. My mom's like, what are you using? I want some. By the way, my mom is visiting. It's so good to see my mom. I haven't seen my mom. I think there's a cat hair on my face. I don't know if they're just like drifting around this room. The cat's not even in here, but that doesn't mean she hasn't left her calling card behind. <laughs> but my mom, I haven't seen my mom since March of 2020. She came for my girl's birthdays. Well, she and my dad both came for my girl's birthdays. And um, then I didn't get to see her because my parents live in Ohio. And so it was one of those things where I was like, oh, I didn't see my mom. I'm gonna figure out what I'm gonna do for eyeshadow really quick. I think I'll use this. This is the Paris Edit from Viseart. So I hadn't seen my folks in, what, a year and three months. And the only reason I'm seeing my mom right now is because we went to a family funeral. Um, my mom's brother passed away last July. My uncle was a nurse practitioner and had his own office in California. And he caught the virus from a patient he was treating and got really sick. And both he and his wife got really sick and my aunt recovered and my uncle didn't. And then we weren't able to get together and you know, have a service of any sort until just recently. And so my mom said, I, I wanna go for my brother's memorial service. So she's out here um, and both my brother and I live in Washington state. We live four hours apart, but she's like, all of my kids and my grandkids are too far away and I haven't seen them. So it's nice. And the weird thing is the last time I saw my mom, I remember, and I was thinking about this in the last year and a quarter, that the last time I saw my mom, I was bawling, I was crying because I was thinking that I just gotten news that my VP shunt wasn't working 
the way it was supposed to, and that probably meant that I needed to have surgery, but I hadn't heard from the neurosurgeon yet whether I needed to have surgery or not. It was like not till a month later. And I literally was like, I don't want to have another surgery. I don't want to have another brain surgery because it's always, at the time that it happens, you kind of steal yourself and you're, okay, it's going to be fine. I've done this before, but literally I'm petrified. And I like to tell myself, no, 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 I'm fine. It's old hat. This is my fifth time. Someone's still cutting into your head. So I was worried. I remember in, I was in the parking lot of a restaurant hanging on to my mom, just like, mom, I don't want to have surgery again. She was hugging me. And we didn't know that that would be the last time I'd see her. She was planning on coming out in the summer. I usually see my parents like four times a year, like once a quarter, they'll come out, we'll go out. Sometimes maybe only three times a year, but I'm used to seeing them more often, even though they are at a distance. And this last year has been really hard because I'm close with my parents, especially my mom, and not being able to see her was really hard. I just realized I'm picking up all the neutral colors <laughs> like I always do. You surprised? I'm not surprised. There are some beautiful mauves and pinks and grays in here and I'm still going for my regular old neutral look. I use the deepest color in here to give me a little depth on the outside corner. So with my mom visiting, she's gonna spend probably two or three weeks here at our house. She's already been here for almost a week. Um, and then she's gonna go visit my brother for a couple of weeks and then she'll drive back. So while she's here, we're doing a lot of projects. My mom has an amazing eye for interior decorating, um, for fabric. She does a lot of sewing. She taught me how to sew. I'm not a really good sewer, but I can like, I can hem pants or a skirt. I can, you know, take in a waistband. I can, I can do some, and if I have to put together a costume for the kids, I can do that. But I wouldn't want to like make a pair of pants that I wear myself. <laughs> my mom could, she could make, she used to make all of my dresses growing up for church and, um, you know, for special events. I, my mother is an amazing seamstress and when my kids are really little. She used to sew for them all the time, but she hasn't done a lot of sewing recently because we've been apart. She's like, well, now that I'm here, let me make something for each of your girls. They each need a black dress for one for orchestra and one for choir and for whatever musical um, groups are going to be in for next year at school. So she's making them their black performance dress. And my kids are going to the fabric store. I used to live at the fabric store when I was a kid. My mom did a lot of crafty things when I was growing up, you know, flower arranging. Um, she crochets, she knits. No, she doesn't crochet, she knits. Um, she, she just sews, like sewing is kind of like her big thing. And to the point where she was, you know, making coverings for the windows, like really fancy ones. And my mom has an amazing eye. Anyway, so she's she comes to my house, she's like, oh, you need it. And I'm like, Ugh, home improvement mom is here. <laughs> So I'm, I'm I'm like, okay, instead of being like, oh, I gotta move all this stuff, just embrace it and use it because it's gonna be a couple months before mom's back. So my mom is making some suggestions. My husband um, just got a promotion. He has been working at um, a local store, a bookstore at a um, local university. Um, as the manager for, I don't know, a decade now, and it's, it's been a really good job for him, but he's been wanting to get out of retail. And the company that he works for has a tech team that needed a supervisor. And so my husband applied for it and they hired him, but because of people having spent the last year and change working from home, normally, like two years ago, if he were to have applied for this job, he would have had to move across the country to where the home offices are in New Jersey. And I was like, I don't think I want to live in New Jersey. But now since everybody's learned how to work from home and people actually see that people are working when they're home, he can get this promotion and not have to move anywhere. So the one room that we have in our house that is, remember that music room I told you about has all the instruments in it. We got to rearrange everything because that now is becoming his office. <laughs> I'm gonna throw some mascara on and I'll be back in a minute. Just down to lip liner and lipstick, I'm gonna throw on the vintage pink lip liner from Wayne Goss. This one is really soft and neutral. And I'm gonna throw on the new Lisa Eldridge Kitten Mischief lipstick. This is the luxuriously lucent formula, which I love. I love this color, but I feel like I need just a little bit more depth. I'm gonna throw on another shade from Lisa. This one's called Painterly. 
I really love these lipsticks. If you're curious and you want to watch me trying on all the new products I got from Lisa Eldridge, I will link it for you here as well as in the description box below. But this is the finished look. Uh, probably a lot more makeup than I needed for today because I'm making dinner outside today and it's going to be uh, probably triple digits. But that's okay. It'll just melt off, right? That's fair. Who knows? Maybe it'll last really well. I don't know to see um, but thank you so much for watching today don't forget about that giveaway I'm doing um, I will leave the link to the video with the giveaway in it in the description box down below thank you so much for watching thank you for being subscribed thank you for sharing my channel with other people who you think might enjoy it as well that really has helped my channel continue to grow I really appreciate all of your support and I would love to send you the products listed in my giveaway. So I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you again soon.